Welcome to a Friday at yournews.com, the Parker and the Man page. Mark Wilson with your webcam on this what now? May, look, 14th, 2010. That's 1 and 4 if you're scoring at home. Middle of the month of May already. Uh, you know what opens tomorrow if you're an IndyCar race fan? Uh, yes, the Brickyard, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the greatest spectacle in racing coming up Memorial Day weekend, the Indianapolis 500. You got the Indy 500, I got a scratch. Indy 500 coming up, and um, the track is open for business Saturday. Uh, the first practice runs, I believe, begin at noontime all the way to 6. There's a big Everclear concert later at the track. So it's open. It's ready to go. Uh, the piece today is on how we need to bring the Indy cars back to Michigan. It still baffles me. It still boggles my pea brain that uh, we don't have Indy car racing in Michigan anymore. We used to have, well, basically three races. We used to have two at MIS, not the NASCARs. This is the Indy cars. The old Detroit News uh, 250, remember that at all, along with the Michigan 500. And it morphed into, into all sorts of different races uh, when the IRL took over, the whole incident with CART and the, the merger and Tony George and the IRL thing and Indianapolis. A lot of history there that I uh, pointed out in the piece today and how we got to this point where um, uh, you just have nothing going on IndyCar-wise in the state of Michigan with Roger Penske right here, a guy who is... When, what, 10, 11, 12 Indianapolis 500s as an owner, as a car owner? It just, uh, it's just, it's amazing. And uh, off of Belle Isle for the Grand Prix, you had the Grand Prix back in the days when it was Formula One. Then, uh, of course, CART took over that thing, and the Indy cars uh, started there back in, uh, what, the 90s. And we just had a great time on Belle Isle. And, you know, it went away, it came back, Penske brought it back, and then it went away again. And here we sit today, 2010. And nothing on the schedule. And it's just, I don't know, I guess we let it get biased because there's more important stuff, obviously, uh, in the world and in our world here in Michigan, Metro Detroit. But I am now rallying. I'm, I'm putting up the sign. I have, I've opened up the shingle and I've said, let's bring IndyCar back to, uh, IndyCar racing back to Michigan. So that's what the piece is about today. Uh, with the track opening in Indianapolis and a big, uh, couple weeks coming up here for the Indianapolis 500 uh, on Memorial Day weekend. Uh, so check that out. Also uh, in the piece today, as we hit the middle of the month of May, uh, it's Preakness time, second leg of the Triple Crown, Super Saver and Calvin Borrell up. Uh, we'll be one of 12 horses uh, tomorrow at Pimlico in Baltimore. Um, we'll see what the track looks like at that time. Uh, but I still believe that Super Saver can take the longer course. And I think Super Saver with Calvin Borrell, who won on Rachel Alexandra in the Preakness last year after winning on Mind That Bird in the Kentucky Derby, he won back-to-back -to -back races in the Triple Crown with two different horses. We all know that story by now. If you don't, look it up. <laughs> but that's what happened. And Borrell will try to win two in a row. He'll try to be the first jockey, let's face it, since Stevie Coffin in 1978 on Affirmed uh, to win the Triple Crown. Uh, affirmed won it in 78, Seattle Slew won it in 77, Super, uh, my favorite secretariat in 73. We haven't had anything like it's, it's affirmed in 78, no Triple Crown winner. So Super Saver has that shot. All starts again with winning the Preakness tomorrow, and then, of course, the Belmont Stakes, if, in fact, Todd Pletcher chooses to go there, which, of course, I'm assuming he will. You can't take anything for granted these days in uh, thoroughbred horse racing. But uh, my pick tomorrow, Super Saver, mark it down. Your Kentucky Derby winner, just like I picked, Super Saver to win the Kentucky Derby. That's me patting myself on the back a number of times for picking the Derby winner right here at yournews.com before it actually happened. Uh, also on there, Trey Hillman. Just a couple of days ago I wrote about um, Trey Hillman and how he kept his job in Kansas City after this horrible royal start. Well, they fired him yesterday, so Trey Hillman is out. He'll find work. I don't want anybody to lose their jobs anymore. <laughs> Please, seriously. Trey Hillman will be gainfully employed. Don't you worry about him. But the Royals let him go as their manager. And, you know, Kansas City, how insignificant can you be? Ned Yost? That's the guy you're bringing from the front office, the former Brewers manager, Ned Yost. That's all you can come up with is going to manage the Royals the rest of the season. I guess it doesn't matter who manages them. <laughs> Justin Verlander shut out of the Yankees. Uh, can't beat that. Red Sox coming to town. Tigers took three out of four from the Yanks. Uh, I don't go crazy on that because we'll get to the Tigers when they turn 40, meaning 40 games in. i got a piece on that coming up. Uh, but the Red Sox are next for them. And how about Matt Latos for the Padres? He had a one-hit uh, shutout for San Diego at San Francisco. The Padres have won 22 games, eight by shutouts. That's one-third of their, not even, a third of their wins, or something like that, however that works, 
uh, by shutout fashion. That happened for the Padres against the Giants yesterday. LeBron James is out! Bye, LeBron! See ya! Nice playoff run. Yep, Rajon Rondo got him. The Boston Celtics beat the Cavs. As soon as Rondo turned it on, Rondo's become a whole new level player. Talked about that the other day, too. And uh, now LeBron is history, and now LeBron has to figure out his uh, basketball future. So we write a little bit about what's going on there. I try to get a little bit deeper on it and really what's going on in his brain, King James, and it's good to be the king. But LeBron's got some major issues to work out, and if he leaves Ohio, the Akron, Ohio native, I ain't going to like him too much there. And Dan Gilbert will do his best. I've known Dan Gilbert since college at Michigan State. He'll do his best to try to keep LeBron in Cleveland, but... You know, the lights are calling, New York, Los Angeles, the big cities, and we'll see if LeBron can stay away. What will happen? Where will he be? He can opt out this summer of his deal by the time we hit October of this season, of this year, 2010. What will happen back to where will LeBron James be? That's still the question to be answered. Uh, in the finals, I want Suns and Magic. You're down to your uh, semifinal series, your conference finals coming up with Boston and Orlando, the Lakers and Phoenix. It'll be good to see Grant Hill in the finals with Phoenix. So I like Suns Magic. That's what I pick. That's what I want. <laughs> I want the Lakers gone. I want the Celtics gone. And uh, this is uh, season finale time in television. And ABC's private practice last night had one of the great season enders maybe I've ever seen. If it didn't move you, if you watched that show and you didn't get a little misty-eyed, you ain't living. You ain't breathing. Right there, baby. Private practice. I'm hooked. I even wrote that. I'm hooked. You got me. And, of course, the big Grey's Anatomy season finale, two hours next Thursday. So I thought that was a terrific finale for private practice. Who knew they'd kill off... <gasps> Should I say it? Maybe somebody hasn't seen it yet. They killed off... <gasps> I wrote it. I'm not going to tell you the webcam. Check all that out. The IndyCar stuff. Uh, we need to bring IndyCar back to Michigan. The Preakness coming up. Trey Hillman fired by the Royals. Verlander shut out of the Yankees. Latos is uh, shut out of the Giants. On the one-hitter. LeBron out! See you, LeBron! See you, Cavaliers! And uh, the other NBA stuff in private practice. All there for you, the Parker Demand page at yournews.com. Have a great weekend.